right behind everybody. This tree right here, and all of these evergreens for the rest of this hike. It's just one tree. And that is the tree that we talked about with that mushroom, which is the hemlock rishi mushroom on a hemlock tree. So this is the hemlock tree, our state tree, Suga canadensis. And as I mentioned, Suga, that is like a hemlock name. So Ganoderma suge grows on Suga canadensis. So if you look at Latin names, it'll tell you a lot about different things. Also, if you study mushrooms, you're going to learn plants anyway. You're going to learn trees because you have to. That's why getting into mushrooms is such a cool hobby because you learn so much about ecology, not just the mushrooms. You learn plants and learn trees as well. So this tree used to dominate Pennsylvania, used to dominate Ohio, used to dominate New York, all of Northeast of the United States until about the 1800s. And people got the brilliant idea to deforest Pennsylvania and to deforest the entire Northeast of the United States for agriculture, cities, development, also for the tannin industry. So this bark is very high in tannic acids or tannins. Maybe you're familiar with tannins and uh, acorns. Anybody an acorn eater here? Yeah. Eat acorns, a lot of tannins. How about wine? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Chocolate has some tannins, uh, berries have tannins in them as well, tea has tannins. It's that astringent pump, but to tan hides for leather, people would debark these trees, but use the lumber for building things, uh, soak it in water, you make a little bath, you put hides that were shipped from the west, and you have durable waterproof leather. But then you don't have any more forests. So Pennsylvania is basically deforested, we don't have many large hemlock trees anymore. All the ones you see here are second or third growth hemlock trees. We do have two patches remaining in western Pennsylvania, which is Cook Forest and Allegheny National Forest. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to check it out. Beautiful, beautiful large trees, 350 years old, 150, 180 feet tall, just massive. That's kind of what the northeastern United States used to look like just a couple centuries ago. And if you're interested in checking out that place, I'm actually leading a walk just like this, but at Cook Forest the last weekend of August. So if you like this enough and you want to come back, come check out an old growth forest hike. Uh, I believe it's the last Saturday of August. Um, anyway, to identify hemlock trees, the leaves or needles are completely flat. They're not pointed like a pine tree. And so I'm just going to rip off a piece down here. And so when you think of a pine tree, they're really long needles. Some of them are shorter, but generally they're long needles. Not so with a hemlock tree. I'm going to pass this around. You see that it's, it's flat. And on the bottom, flip it around and look at the bottom because you're going to see two silver strips. And these silver strips are known as stomata. That's how this tree breathes and respires and transpires. That's a key identifying characteristic because we're going to look at a somewhat toxic lookalike which does not have those two silver strips in the bottom. But you can make teas out of these leaves. Most conifer trees like pine, spruces, firs, hemlocks, Granted that it's a tree, not the poisonous hemlock plant. You can make teas out of it. It's a good source of antioxidants and vitamin C as well. Um, and you can nibble on the fresh tips as well. And so we're going to walk around and you'll see some fresh tips just coming out. You can nibble on, nibble on them. They're kind of turpentine-y, uh, but I think they're pleasant. They're kind of lemony as well. So that's the eastern hemlock tree right there. It's also very shade tolerant. And so notice that there are trees growing in the shade, very low down right here. And it's not getting a lot of sunlight. If this was an eastern white pine tree, you wouldn't see that. Eastern white pine trees need a lot of sunlight. And so you'll only see eastern white pine trees in an open clearing, or you'll see it open in the canopy, way at the top. It drops all of its lower branches because it can't survive in the shade. But the hemlock tree can. So in Cook Forest, we'll talk about those differences because there are large eastern white pine trees in Cook Forest and hemlock trees. How do you tell the difference when they're both massive and very tall? The hemlocks have branches all up and down and foliage up and down. The pines only at the way tip. Also, the pines have the long needles. Hemlocks don't. What's the book like? Oh, we'll get to it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, keep your notebook handy. Okay. We'll get to it. She wants to know the look like. Yeah, no, that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll continue on this. Over here, there's a there's an interesting mushroom. The mushroom. Here. Yeah, we'll talk about the mushrooms too. Oh yeah. So we have a mushroom here, also known as a fungus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's like what a high school class would teach you, right? <laughs> no, we'll go much deeper than that. This is a really cool mushroom. This is one of the coolest mushrooms out there. It's not really, but it is a cool mushroom. All mushrooms are pretty cool out here. This is known as a russula mushroom. R-U-S-S-U-L-A, russula. Very common mushroom and a very important mushroom as well. It's important because it's a mycorrhizal mushroom. What does that mean? 
let's break that apart. Myco is mushroom, the fungus. Rhizal is root. So a mushroom root. This mushroom hooks up symbiotically with plants and trees. And it benefits the trees and then the tree benefits the mushroom. Without mycorrhizal fungi like the rustler mushrooms, we wouldn't have forests in Pennsylvania. No forest would exist. All the oak trees require mycorrhizal fungus. The hemlock trees require them. The pine trees require them. And so I know as human beings we like to categorize everything plant, fungus. But where does one start and where does one end? Who really knows? They just connect with one another. This one puts up a fruiting bud. So Rustler, R-U-S-S-U-L-A, a genus of 400, 500 different species, very hard to identify down to species level unless you have a microscope. So the best we could probably do is say Rustler right now. So whenever you find any mushroom, here's how you tell it's a Rustler. It's a colored cap. Many times it's a brightly colored cap, purple, green, yellow, red, white gills in the bottom, and it's very brittle. This mushroom just like breaks apart, like chalk. Rustlers notoriously do that. It's a rustler. Not many of them are edible, some of them are, but not too many people are obsessed with them. Yeah. But you're going to see a lot of them. Some are yellow, some are green, some are red, but they're rustlers.